Welcome to the last day of this summer school on disarmament and proliferation for Latin American and Caribbean uh, diplomats. So I really hope that you have been enjoying the course and that at this point you have uh, broad knowledge of all the aspects related to this matter. Uh, yesterday we had uh, really interesting presentations on nuclear security and prevention on nuclear terrorism. And later on we have uh, the breakout uh, group discussions on the most severe threats on the nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament regime and ways to steam them. Uh, in this regard, our current session will focus on the result of your discussions. So I will start inviting the representatives of each group to present a brief summary of your discussions and share it with the rest of us. Uh, at this point, uh, we have identified uh, the following um, representatives that will speak on behalf of their groups. We have Gonzalo Mauricio Vázquez Orozco, Guillermo Chávez Conejo, Kimberly González, Antonio Butler, Miguel Uribe, and Aldo Alexandro. Uh, just one favor, uh, Antonio Butler, please raise your hand so we can find you in the list and we can give you access to video and, and to, to sound. And uh, I know that if uh, Aldo Alexandro is not connected, Montserrat will take his place. So please, uh, Monse, please be uh, aware that maybe you might need to jump in because uh, we cannot see Aldo now uh, connected. Okay, so uh, without further delay, uh, please, uh, Gonzalo, could you, Gonzalo Vasquez, could you please uh, share the, the conclusions of your group? Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, well, first of all, on behalf of uh, the members of our group, Shakira, Luis, Silvia, Remilia, Peterson, Omar, and Maya, we would uh, uh, very much like to thank all the organizers for this uh, excellent event. Uh, yesterday, we had some uh, pretty interesting discussions and uh, there were some uh, very interesting insights as well. Well, in the case of our groups, uh, of our group, uh, when we talked about the threats, uh, I think uh, one of the main ones that we all agreed to is uh, the lack of awareness from society and politicians. If there is no awareness, the potential risk that nuclear powers continue with their arms programs without any pressure will continue intact. Uh, at the same time, we believe that the nuclear power disputes uh, between many different countries, it's uh, one of the biggest threats. Uh, it's uh, uh, not the whole world that is on this, this, under these uh, tensions, but we have the US and Russia, US, China, India and Pakistan, India and China, the DPRK, the US, South Korea, Japan, Israel, and Iran. Uh, it is uh, a very specific group of countries uh, that uh, have these rising nuclear tensions. Uh, another one of the threats is uh, if we continue to add in countries to the nuclear club, it will also raise uh, the risks. Uh, at the same time, there is uh, also the risks of an accidental launch or a response to a false threat. And uh, I think we, it is very important uh, uh, following all the, the presentations given in, in this uh, seminar to also take into account the threat of nuclear terrorism and the use of new technologies as artificial intelligence, cyber attacks, new delivery vehicles, etc. On the other hand, the erosion of the international architecture of non-proliferation and nuclear disarmament also adds to the existing threats. There is unfulfilled nuclear disarmament by the legal uh, nuclear weapon states and no motivation to do so, uh, unfulfilled uh, um, compromises. 
And on the other hand, the arms control negotiations, uh, we believe it's a little bit outdated because uh, we live already in a different uh, reality, maybe not nuclear reality, but power struggle realities. Having the same approach will risk having more of the same or even discourages negotiations. Uh, at the same time, we added two uh, points in our group that are specifically to Latin America. Uh, one of them is uh, the threats of uh, uh, the, a direct threat to Latin America, which would be uh, in a very low level, but it still exists, like it is terrorism or an accidental launch. But uh, we believe the, the biggest threat to Latin America is all the indirect impacts like the economic disruption to global economy or uh, a nuclear winter. Uh, in the matter of opportunities or solutions uh, regarding these uh, threats, it was a uh, a very enriching conversation. It's uh, one of the, the hot topic, the most complicated uh, things to approach. But uh, we, we did share some, some ideas. Uh, the first of uh, which is uh, the continuing of strengthening the international non-proliferation and disarmament regimes. We need to increase awareness from politicians which is uh, particularly needed in order to push governments to ratify treaties such as the CPBT and TPNW, as well as to continue bringing this topic to the international fora. It is important that we continue to unimplement uh, confidence building measures. Uh, other countries can only put some pressure, pressure, but at the end it is going to be up to the nuclear countries to uh, compromise in, this, in these issues. On the other hand, uh, we still need to talk about export controls and the full implementation of the existing regimes. It might be, be difficult because uh, if one country breaks it, then it kind of, uh, uh, disincentivize uh, or uh, affects the regimes, but we believe that it is important to keep pushing towards uh, their implementations. Uh, another solution might be to uh, create new multilateral arrangements to tackle new topics uh, to strengthen diplomatic efforts to enforce international instruments on non-proliferation and nuclear disarmament. Also, there was uh, uh, the view that uh, the I, uh, IAEA needs to uh, increase uh, its fundings in order to uh, create more capacity building, uh, which is very necessary in, in all countries as well as the safeguards uh, verifications. It is important to engage civil society to keep pressure on nuclear states and the subject in the agenda and give serious security assurances to states prone to developing nuclear capabilities so that they choose not to proliferate. On the other hand, we believe that uh, as non-nuclear weapon states, we should uh, think outside the box and look for new ways to engage and facilitate all relevant stakeholders to the negotiating table. Uh, finally, uh, we also discussed uh, from the Latin American uh, perspective, which uh, it is also important because of the lessons learned and also the role we can take uh, in this matter. Uh, Latin America, first of all, is uh, a success story in non-proliferation as the first nuclear weapon free zone. Uh, it is important to highlight the case of Brazil and Argentina, that they overcame past differences and agreed 
on a joint framework, so it is possible. These stories need to be broadcast so we can get support and show that disarmament and non-proliferation are not just unachievable idealistic goals, but a reality that can be rich. Uh, thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much, Gonzalo, for sharing these views. Now, uh, let's go to the second group. Uh, please, Guillermo Chavez, could you please uh, present? Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. My name is Guillermo Chavez Conejo. I'm Mexican. And um, on behalf of my team, Florence Ricardo Gamalien Gallina, we avail this opportunity to thank the Summer School, Instituto Mateo Romero, and James Martin Center for organizing all the lectures. I will address firstly on what we identify as the most severe threats to the nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament regime. And secondly, the possible solutions to these challenges. As for the threats, we identify three. One will be the innovation, second, logistics, and third, the political stal stalemate. As for the proposed solutions, we identify three main pillars counter technologies, um, fortify the legal, legal framework, and forge alliances between governments and civil societies. As for the threats on innovation, we identified the um, emergence of new technologies such as drones, artificial intelligence, and software, but also the possibility of, uh, of a nuclear detonation or nuclear material being uh, used by criminal organizations uh, and this outweighs the benefits of nuclear power. The challenge here, dear colleagues, is to convince world leaders that do not subscribe to this belief that it should indeed be an overreaching goal uh, of all nations. As for the logistics, we identified that um, the illicit transport or theft of nuclear material of non-stake actors that, that they can employ um, these technologies to further their efforts to acquire highly enriched uranium or plutonium. As for the political stalemate, the lack of political will towards um, advancing the non-proliferation and disarmament agenda, primarily amongst um, world powers and uh, nuclear weapon states. Specifically, we're talking here about uh, the US withdrawal from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action and the, inter, the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty. Also the rising tensions between uh, the US and Russia, US China, US DPRK. Um, and the challenge here is uh, we identify that is to influence key policymakers in the major world powers that um, non-proliferation and disarmament should be a top priority just as domestic security issues are. Um, what we propose. First, in the counter technology field, we propose a greater investment in research and development. The idea is to count on, the, on mitigation and counter tools to, show, to, to slow the rate um, at which external parties and or terrorist groups have access to nuclear material and eventually to nuclear weapons. Also, reinforce the security systems in place to guard existing nuclear material. These security measures should be standardized. Uh, as for the, uh, to fortify the legal framework, we propose to strengthen the, um, the existing laws and that states should adopt them towards the regularization and monitoring of emerging technologies and devices. As for the governmental and civil society alliances, Smaller countries and economic powers should continue to lobby larger nuclear weapon states towards the adoption of treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons and the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty in international fora. Moreover, the Latin American and the Caribbean region must band together at international level and involve civil society representatives on their delegations as all interested parties uh, should have a voice to be heard. The specific efforts we propose here are two. To continue spreading awareness 
of the potential dangers of nuclear material and the humanitarian impact of any nuclear detonation, both governments and civil society, but also, in, and we believe this is the most important point, to implement a denuclearization education at grassroots levels. Um, also, we propose a similar, uh, similar like the Me Too movement, uh, we propose a wave of, um, of support worldwide for the complete banning of nuclear weapons and materials. Dear colleagues, we are certain that if the upcoming generations are taught about the humanitarian effect of nuclear weapons and material, we could shape the minds of future world leaders against continued proliferation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guillermo, uh, for, for sharing uh, the conclusions of your group. Now, please, uh, I'll give the floor to Antonio Butler. Could you please share uh, the conclusion? Thank you. Uh, Antonio, you are muted. We cannot hear you. Thank you. Mute. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, fellow panelists. My group, or Group 5, was comprised of the following diplomats. Carlos Rubio from the Embassy of Mexico to the Republic of Korea, Felix Spencer from Panama, Colum um, Kimberly Gonzalez from Trinidad and Tobago, Pablo Figuerera from Guatemala, Sonia Samiento from Bolivia, Yenver Kassar from St. Lucia, and yours truly, Antonio Butler from the Bahamas. Our group concluded that if the current U.S. administration were re-elected to office in, in November 2020, this would be the greatest structural risk or threat to nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament. The United States of America is a key decision maker relative to nuclear negotiations with Russia, China, and North Korea. But the present US administration has introduced an unforeseen level of unpredictability into the global political environment. Essentially, the, de the deterioration of, global, of geopolitics between nuclear weapon states is a major catalyst to nuclear proliferation. Therefore, the goal should be for the United States to retake its role as an effective communicator and negotiator in lieu of the seemingly divisive and uncooperative approach of late. World security is at risk when diplomacy is done badly. Point two, another threat to nuclear non-proliferation disarmament is the resulting instability in the world. If terrorist groups were to acquire nuclear weapons, this would greatly increase global insecurity because terrorism does not recognize borders. As discussed, this would lead to global panic in governments and the breakdown of social order, which is similar to what COVID-19 inflicted, but with more drastic effects since there would be a lack of trust between nations. Solutions. There needs to be a follow-up of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1540, and decisions reached upon must be based on international law. Moreover, there's a, there's a, there's a need for stronger safeguards against nuclear hedging to guarantee or ensure that states are not able to divert programs for peaceful uses to non-peaceful uses. As a whole, more multilateralism and international cooperation are required. There should be a continuation of innovative diplomatic approaches to nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament, like the methods utilized for the negotiation of the Treaty of the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, including non-state stakeholders such as civil society. The United Nations Global Strategy Against Terrorism to fight terrorism financing must be followed in order to make people more aware of the importance of nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. Lastly, the art of diplomacy should be the first tool to solve conflicts. 
in order to maintain the current non-proliferation and disarmament regime and to stop it from further weakening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonio. So I heard Kimberly Gonzalez. Are you in the same group? Yes, yes she okay. is in the same group. Because, uh, yeah, we thought you were leaders from different groups. So, well, uh, Kimberly, do you have anything else to add to what Antonio just mentioned? No? Okay. Uh, okay. So, there's just one thing. Uh, please, if there's any other group representative that is not yet uh, listed as a panelist, please raise your hand because at this point we only have representatives for five of the six groups. So please, we are missing one uh, group representative. We'll just call for that group. Someone raise their hand so we can actually pass you uh, to the panel. Uh, okay, uh, meanwhile, we go to the next group representative. Uh, please, uh, Aldo Alexandro, could you please uh, present for, on behalf of group four? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Um, um, good morning, everyone. everyone. I have to confess that I'm going through terrible problems of connectivity and electricity at this moment. So if something happens, uh, my colleague Montserrat from Mexico uh, will jump in and will take the front wheel on my behalf, on, on behalf of our, of our group. I thank you very much. I, um, uh, I'm a representative of uh, group four, which was uh, made of representative of Jamaica, Mexico, Chile, and Trinidad and Tobago, as well as a representative from OPANAL. Uh, the, um, the group members are uh, listed in alphabetic order are, um, uh, sorry. Alicia Taylor from Jamaica, Montserrat Robalo from Mexico, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Olivia Rodriguez from Mexico too, Daniela Ramirez Castillo from Mexico, Panal, Nicole Ledoux from Chile, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, we used to think that Kimberly Gonzalez that has just spoken before me was to join our group, but uh, she's somewhere else and well, uh, we miss her, <laughs> and of course uh, we had uh, noticeable and, and interesting visitors at some times, including uh, uh, Ambassador Paula Ramirez. Um, uh, I will just to make it crisp and concrete, just to read uh, the summary of our findings. Um, group four met on time and had a rich conversation and have an interesting and thought-provoking interaction. As for the challenges, as for the main challenges, most participant, participants pointed out to the ongoing polarization of nuclear weapon states among them and vis-a-vis -vis non-nuclear weapon states in the realm of nuclear disarmament, non-proliferation, arms control, and international security which have a variety of recent expressions, including the negotiations and adoption of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in 2017, and the development that have led to the demise of the GC, JCPOA. In this regard, the apparent interruption of the continued conversation among main nuclear weapons problems constitute, in this case, within this general challenge of polarization, uh, a very dangerous challenge at the height of the current context in which a, an acute political conflict among them takes place with an inflammatory rhetoric. The MPT regime is compromised and new disruptive technologies are already at hand away from any re regulations, doctrines, or rules for their use and adequate response in such cases. Secondly, again, as for the challenges, uh, the group members agreed on a variety of, uh, of challenges, again, faced by, by the NPT and related regimes nowadays. 
including new technologies, including artificial intelligence and hypersonic weaponry that are emerging without any regulations and controls and the current state of the game regarding the commitments of all states, nuclear weapons and non-nuclear weapon states, to abide to the international law while non-state actors seek, still seek access to nuclear materials, including fissile. As regards to the current structure of the international law, some uh, participants uh, identified the apparent disconnection between several relevant regimes that uh, uh, was acknowledged as one of the main ongoing challenges, which requires out of the box thinking and alternative. I, by this, we mean that there should be some kind of stronger connection between this very realm of international law and other regimes, including those from the international humanitarian law, human rights uh, law, and sustainable development, uh, the sustainable development processes. So that to, to, to get some kind of leverage for, for policy and political change. Moreover, the change of perspectives within some key regimes, including, including arms control, may undermine the ultimate goals of the NP NTP regime. As for alternatives or policy responses, uh, first of all, uh, our participants identified uh, the need for contributing to create an enabling environment for nuclear weapon states to exercise their leadership and restraint, particularly uh, in this complex moment. Uh, and the, the most noticeable alternative for this to take place is perhaps to launch confidence building initiatives by goodwill states or regional groupings, including the NAM, the Non-Aligned Movement, or other relevant actors, not necessarily states. Um, secondly, uh, um, another alternative for this process to be put forward and launch uh, back on track again um, is the designing of out-of-the-box alternatives for tackling the disconnection or the apparent disconnection between uh, the nuclear disarmament or arms, uh, nuclear arms control and related regimes vis-a-vis uh, -vis other international law regimes, including international humanitarian law, the human rights regime, and those uh, and, and the sustainable development processes and, and, and relevant environmental law. Um, the contribution, what we mean by this is that the these other regimes may potentially contribute to bring the relevant bodies out of the current deadlock and for creating enabling conditions for all states to abide by the international law. And lastly, um, several participants stressed the importance of establishing linkage. Okay. Uh, okay. Basically, uh, this is a complementary idea from the last I just mentioned, suggesting that by combining uh, the contributions from a variety of international regimes, that may trigger somehow a change of calculations from, from the perspective of major nuclear weapons powers with the view of preventing nuclear activities such uh, the promised future testing, uh, which evidently are in breach of international obligations. Basically, the idea, one example, one, one, a very good example what, what, that came in was perhaps to make a stronger connection with the climate change regime so that perhaps to add costs to these announcements or an eventual uh, uh, performance of a, a test by basically uh, making more visible the breach of international law, not only from the nuclear weapons perspective, but also from the climate change perspective, the humanitarian law perspective, and this was basically the main solution that we went through at the time when we met. So I will leave it there and I thank you very much for your attention. 
Thank you very much, Aldo. Particularly, I thank you for the promotion. I'm just a first secretary, not an ambassador, but I will take the promotion <laughs> anytime. <laughs> I will give the floor to Miguel Uribe, please, to share uh, the views of your group. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I will speak on behalf of the debate group whose members are Alfonso, Kyra, Pablo, Patricio, Rodrigo, Shakira, William, and me. First, um, we would like to thank the organizers of the summer school for giving us the opportunity to exchange ideas and concerns about non-proliferation and nuclear disarmament. Since most of us are newcomers in these topics and therefore we might not fully understand yet the complexity around non-proliferation and disarmament, we do know that nuclear weapons pose a, a great threat to mankind, to other species and to the environment as you just all just mentioned in your interventions. So uh, we agree that the challenges are many and possibly in years to come, we may face even more than the existing nowadays. So we are aware that in order to contribute to a nuclear weapons free world, we need to have a comprehensive perspective in order to tackle all the possible obstacles to achieve that goal. One of the great advantages of this summer school is that it has allowed us to see different perspectives involving experts, academia, civil society and governments, which have allowed us to approach the issues from a more holistic view. So our group identified as existing challenges how the development and use of new technologies might increase the risk of nuclear use and how artificial intelligence and autonomous military systems might become the focus of an armed race among nuclear armed states. Also, our group mentioned that the current tension and conflicts that are existing nowadays, for instance, um, the ones in the Middle East or the one between China and India, make us think about how difficult it can be to achieve disarmament and to ensure non-armament. Now, uh, speaking about solutions, in the group, we agreed on the need and relevance of the empowerment of the civil society in demanding to our, our governments to put an end to the threat under we all live as long as there are nuclear weapons ready to be launched by demanding concrete actions such as joining the existing treaties or supporting the actions of uh, supervision such as the one that, uh, that the ones carried out by the EIAA. ICANN, for instance, is a very good example of the awareness that organized citizens can raise, can raise when they demand the end of nuclear weapons and the right to have a future where this threat no longer exists. We, not only as diplomats, but as citizens, as citizens sorry, of the world, have the duty to advocate for the nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. Our group also highlighted the importance of the academy and the contributions made by the Matias Romero Institute and by the James Martin CNS through this kind of trainings and the development of tools that allow diplomats and in general society to have a better understanding of this topic as a first step towards reaching solutions. As one of the opportunities for improvement of the summer school in the future, we consider that it would be important to have experts who share with the participants China's vision as a key player in non-proliferation issues so uh, during these two weeks, we heard positions closer to the West, to Russia, and even to cases like Iran. But it could be important to have the vision from the Chinese perspective or involving uh, the role of China's playing in these issues, taking and considering the important role that China nowadays has. And of course, China must be a key actor in finding solutions and facing the challenges on uh, nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. I would like to finish this participation on behalf of this group by reminding us what the Mexican ambassador Miguel Marin Bosch, a disarmament champion, advocated for and that is still valid today. We need an agenda geared to disarm those countries that have nuclear weapons and not only geared to codify unilateral disarmament measures or preventing others from acquiring weapons and weapon systems. Hopefully we as diplomats from Latin America and the Caribbean might contribute in the future to the successful adoption and implementation of such an agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Miguel, for sharing uh, the views of your group. Uh, 
And last but not least, me, uh, please, Ambassador Mario Bucaro, could you please share uh, the conclusions of your group? Thank you. Thank you so much, Paola. Uh, thank you, John, for, for this great opportunity. Let me tell you, and I want to start about three words that for me are key that we discussed during our group uh, yesterday. First, it is commitment. Today we live uh, with a great legacy that has been done by many great diplomats from the past. But today we have a commitment, not to think in the future, to, but to think in the present. This great commitment that we have is that we are always asking people to do what we're responsible to do. I feel the most, uh, all, all of, among all my, feel, my fellow colleagues, even though someone says yesterday uh, that if I have just 20 years uh, of life, I cannot be able to have an opinion here because, or rule the life of others because I'm too old. And I'm on that side. Uh, maybe 20 years or no, maybe, maybe will be. But when I see this first class of diplomats, young diplomats that are on, on Zoom presented themselves, there's no more excuses to commit ourselves to be able to make this change. Why? Because it's a thing of survival. We're talking about today about COVID and other things, but making awareness of the importance of discernment around the world and the consequences of what COVID will bring in the future due to the lack of uh, economic issues and conflicts that we will arise, it brings us the, the great commitment, but also the awareness that we need to bring, as Gonzalo says in their group, the, the need of making sure that everyone from old to young to know about the importance to work together for peace, disarmament, and the issue of survival. Why we say that and why we discuss this, this thing? Because we cannot leave this uh, virtual room by not committing ourselves to evaluate what we have achieved and what we can do today. What we have achieved is the awareness. Definitely these two weeks has changed our lives. And Guatemala has lead in many places, especially in Geneva, Ambassadora Monica Bolaños has led an amazing group of ladies of, for disarmament. Today, we want to leave a legacy as a group and invite you and our proposal today is to be able to make a, the first think tank virtual from a promotion of this training course that can monthly commit themselves to come together and start to, to present issues, but also to bring all these proposals from my fellow colleagues, to bring social so civil society in our countries, uh, key speakers and persons that can help us for the next uh, word that I want to mention. And it's upgrade. Uh, I know that it's two technology when we talk about upgrade, but in the case of, of Latin America, we have a huge challenge. Most of us are diplomats here in Latin America. And we, we know that we have many conferences around the world that we will present our issues, but we cannot ask them to do what we cannot start to do in home. Today, uh, we're living from the legacy of 1970s. And, but the Tratelolco uh, agreement needs an upgrade, definitely needs an upgrade. We need to work and to review the clauses of Protocol 1 and 2 we need to start to think about how we're going to operate and talk about artificial intelligence and making sure that in our region, we cannot be able to allow what we can have. And we need you. We need you guys because you are the ones that can understand that. Believe me, for me has been a challenge to study in, in Zoom, but for you it's natural. You don't need a, to wear a tie or to be able to to do all this technology like we do it in the past because it's natural from you and you're the future. So we want to invite you to, to help us to make sure that we can start to bring proposals based on, on doctrine, academy and technology, but especially with your heart to be able to, to review what we, we have today uh, already agreed 
and make sure especially that these technologies uh, will not be the consequences of loss of life in the future. I come uh, from serving on the Middle East. I know what is to, to hear a siren and I know and my children knows how, is what to have a bomb, bombshell in our house. I know the fear of what is a missile on, on, on the range uh, coming on to our way. And because of that, uh, I want to bring special small uh, things because we need to be able to make sure that, that be aware that here we will not be able to, uh, to build uh, nuclear capacities because we, we have a, another great war against uh, poverty and hunger. But uh, definitely the growth and the risk that long, uh, long range missiles and the small range missiles and the building of new technologies can, that can be planted in near from our homes can bring these nuclear wars and bring fear to our people. So we need to be able to upgrade and concentrate new agreements, new commitments, and upgrade what we have in home first, and then we can talk in other places, but we need you. Thank you so much in the name of our group, countries like Costa Rica, Guatemala, Russia, Santa Lucia, and others were there, and I thank my colleagues for this amazing time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for sharing the views of the group. Uh, I just want to ask, I mean, you have the Q&A chat there. If anyone wants to actually add anything uh, from what your representatives just mentioned, please uh, just start posting in the Q&A chat so we can give you the floor at this point. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Jan, if you have uh, anything to, to, to add now? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, the first thing I want to add, I sound a little bit selfish, but um, Paula, I think you and I uh, have done our job, right? We have, our objective was uh, to create an environment for junior and mid-level diplomats in the Latin American and Caribbean region to learn more about non-proliferation. I must say, having listened to these six presentations, um, we, we've accomplished that, but it was not us. Uh, it was the, the, uh, the, the diplomats themselves. Um, and uh, I think, you know, this is such a rich menu of, of ideas shared, and I'm so glad we are recording it, because uh, not only should the six presenters be very proud of, of uh, the way that they've presented, very professional. Um, you can see that this is not, as they say, sometimes it's not your your first uh, your first rodeo. You you have done this before, um, so congratulations on that. But I mean, there's so many interesting ideas came up, uh, and I want to especially pick up uh, or mention Antonio's very bold statement about the biggest threat, um, and and this is not said lightly about the United States, um, and it can change. It can change very quickly. Um, and I, I was also struck by Miguel's um, reference um, to uh, Ambassador Marinbosch. I was actually there when he said that, Miguel. Um, and uh, it, it, is, it is really, I mean, you know, in those days we were talking about the new agenda because, it, uh, you know, this was, before even the new agenda coalition was established, but that was the idea. Uh, it was was very much uh, Miguel Marinbosch was very much one of the, the the original thinkers behind the new agenda coalition, and um, so thank you for for highlighting that. Uh, Aldo's point about uh, climate change. I've always thought, you know, if you if you uh, were to take the people that are involved in climate change and came up with the Paris agreements and, you know, the likes of the young uh, Swedish uh, girl that has, you know, Rita Thunberg, uh, that, has, that has really taken the world on one storm, no matter what world leaders. Um, and can you not bring those kind of people into the disarmament and non-proliferation field? We all have that talent. We just need to be a little bit more bold, I think. Um, new technologies. Uh, even if 
There's a, there's a threat of new technologies. Uh, I think everyone would recognize it, artificial intelligence. But then, you know, Ambassador Bukaro just mentioned an interesting point as well, which I, you know, as a, as a gray beard uh, must, must admit too, that uh, we are fearful of technologies as we get older, the use of these technologies. But this is where, this is where the future lies, especially in, in the, uh, the ideas that uh, Ambassador Bukaro just shared. I think it's a brilliant idea is to create this group uh, as a some, I mean, you use the word think tank, but think tank in the United States and other places means an organization and you know, an institution, but more a collective group of thinkers in this field uh, as a network. I mean, we know Facebook and we know all these things people share on LinkedIn, share ideas. But, you know, here's an opportunity perhaps to establish something. I don't know if the a diplomatic academy can can host something or you know we, we should think about how we can do that because the, the the greatest value of i think of this group um beside you know typically we would have 30 diplomats join us in mexico city um we had more than 60 even 70 at, at, at times um and so I th it would be a, a wonderful opportunity to to share ideas as we as, as you move on, you know, maybe ambassador, not 20 years, but five years from now, some of these colleagues would, would sit at a NPT review conference or in the first committee and they say, hey, I remember you, you were on that, that course with me, you know, so uh, it is amazing to, to see that. Uh, we've actually, um, the, the delegation of Chile, um, you know, has been obviously active also in the NPT and uh cns has an arrangement with with them that we um offer also opportunities for some of our students to be members of the chilean delegation at the npt um, but the interesting thing is if you go to the npt prep comms you sit in that room and you see oh that's someone that was at the summer school there was a fellow you know and it's, it's nothing to but about us it's about the commitment of of this this generation coming in, uh, and I think, but I, I also want to conclude with um, with uh, Ambassador Bukaru's point about um, the first class diplomats. I, and I think it's absolutely first class. Not only the 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 faces on the screen, um, but but the 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 contribution by by everyone uh, in the course. Um, I, I think you you should be proud of it, what you've accomplished, but uh, you have a long um, stretch ahead. So I, I wish you all the best and I can assure you that we here at the Center for Non-Proferation Studies are at your disposal. So um, I will um, make a, a f an, an announcement towards the end as well, but I will say it now, is that we have a annual or biannual fellowship uh, non-proliferation and disarmament. Uh, typically, we bring diplomats, scholars, even journalists from uh, the non-aligned movement, mostly, but also from other countries, to Monterey for three and a half months. And obviously, uh, the Middlebury Institute during this semester, coming semester from August to December, will be closed uh, for in-person classes. And so we will not be able to do that. Well, again, the opportunity there is that uh, we want to make sure that we do this in a synchronous way, just like these courses. Um, and so I will be inviting and I will be entertaining applications from um, the Latin American and Caribbean region. Um, so I will, uh, you know, we will send out uh, notices uh, to to all of you to all your ministries but um, we will we can't accommodate many we can accommodate about 10 because a, a large part of this has to do with research uh, you'll be doing uh, intensive research with some of our experts but the point there is is that uh, you know we would like to support you in in building your careers and getting a better understanding of these issues thank you Thank you very much, Jan. I just want uh, to share with you this uh, feeling of 
being really proud <laughs> uh, in a way of, of the group. I was really uh, listening to you and, 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 I, and, and I got that you really kind of got the message and went even beyond what we actually presented. You start making your own conclusions, you start uh, having an assessment of the situation. And I believe that's what we need uh, now uh, more than ever. We need more, uh, more people, but more really committed people, as, as uh, Ambassador uh, Bucaro just mentioned, uh, committed people to this uh, issue. Uh, we actually, as uh, Latin America and the region, we are an example, yes, with the Tlatelolco Treaty, but not just that. We have a really amazing role to play in order to achieve the TPNW. When we were in the Open Ended Working Group in 2016, it was actually uh, the force that we created uh, as Latin American Caribbean region uh, that really created uh, some pressure in order to get a recommendation to uh, establish the UN conference in order to negotiate the legally binding instrument to prohibit nuclear weapons. We play an amazing role and we also were uh, looking for a more of out of the box uh, alliances. Uh, we approach uh, the Africans as well. We talk to some of uh, uh, the countries that were in the room and say, you know what, please bring the region together because we have something, we, we share the same perspective and we might not be the, the strongest country, but we are many countries. And each of us, when, uh, we, we, have, we have a voice. And that's actually, I think, I mean, in my personal opinion, after being dealing with this um in many forums and, and being uh, there as a Latin American um, representative, I think one of the most important thing is each of us, we have the same voice in the United Nations. It doesn't matter which country we are. The vote is the same, it, even if you are P5 or not P5, you have a vote. You have a voice and you have a responsibility to actually represent not just your countries, but also all those people uh, in the world. So just really believe it. Believe it, but believe it in the way that you act responsible uh, and according to, to, to that role that you have to play. So I think that's the most important part in, in this uh, disarmament field. Uh, also believe that you can do it. You don't know how many times they told us, really prohibiting nuclear weapons, not in my lifetime. We did it in my lifetime. And I'm not at all. So uh, please, uh, I, I, I really invite you uh, to, to get involved. If you like the, this, this topic, we need a lot of um, diplomats in our region. Uh, to have a strong voices, to come join us uh, in, in this armament for us because we, we need to make a change and we need to do it in our lifetime. So I will leave it there. Uh, I don't know if, uh, Jan, if, if we I, I wonder if I could, I mean, I, I hate to put Kimberly on the spot, but um, I was uh, wondering whether she wants to add something. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I have a little connectivity issue, so I would make it very quick. On behalf of everyone who's been a participant of this course, I'd like to express my sincere thanks for bringing this topic to us and allowing us to participate in this forum and to form new connections and renewed interest in the topic. Um, adding to what my colleague, Mr. Butler, would have said, I think um, this is a fantastic step that Mexico has taken and the sense of, um, because with a topic as broad and as nuanced as nuclear non-proliferation, it's, is everyone still hearing me? It's, oh, it's very helpful to have a broad range of actors involved. Um, you would want civil society, you'd want women's groups, environmental groups, and I'd like to encourage the organizers to continue this um, initiative, which is very helpful and I can't wait to make further strides in this topic. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Uh, anyone wants to take the floor before we get to the break? I don't see anyone in the Q&A uh, asking for the floor. So, uh, okay, let's continue with, with the program of this last day. So let's, let's have a break and come back at 10.45.
uh, to, for our next session, the role of women in changing the discourse in nuclear non-proliferation, disarmament, peaceful uses, and nuclear energy, uh, nuclear energy and nuclear security. Uh, so, see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.